right. I hope you can hear me. I got a question the other day about what a typical workday looks like, and it varies a lot. However, there are a few things that I almost always do, and some days are better than others, by the way. So I'm out right now walking Georgie, and we typically go on like one, two, maybe three fairly good walks per day. So I usually start the morning out with uh, some coffee, and then I'll walk Georgie probably anywhere between like 45 minutes and uh, an hour and 15 minutes. If the weather's bad, I may not stay out as long. If it's great and you know she's having a good time, then maybe we'll stay out a little bit longer. And here in Colorado, especially in the summer, and well, the spring and the fall, and even in the winter too, the weather's pleasant very often, so we can get in some pretty good walks. There's a lot of areas to walk around here. I'm a couple miles from where we live, and there's this nice big like multi-acre park. You can see a pagoda. A little monument little tower behind me there so some physical activity and sometimes right I work out at the gym so probably four to five or six days per week I will go to the gym and I don't do anything crazy I'm not training for anything but I'll do like some lightweight training and also some cardio so activity is really important to me in getting out of the house super important because I'm lucky enough to not commute and I'm lucky to like make my own hours so if I'm not careful I can sit at my desk and work 12 hour days easy right because I just I'm interested in what I'm working on and I could just knock it out so that doesn't even get into like the work portion but some sort of physical activity very important to me and I think if you don't have that in your day in your week currently adding some physical activity will be awesome It'll suck for the first couple weeks, like any time that you're trying something new. But then after a while, like you'll feel pretty good about it. And at this point, it's like, even if I know I don't feel that great and I just wanna like go to the gym to get the blood flowing, like I'll do a crappy workout just to do a workout and make sure like I hit another day. So physical activity. The other thing I try to do is I don't, I'm not always great at it, but I try to understand what I want to accomplish for a given week before the week starts. So right now I'm in a like planning and execution phase. So I spent probably two to four weeks like planning my next quarter out. So I know like what blog posts are going live. I know what YouTube videos are going to be coming out, what I need to record and two podcasts per week for a whole quarter, right? So when you put this all together, it is quite a lot of content. A lot of it is repurposed, but you have to plan it out and everything has a different format and you can't just you know, take, for example, a YouTube video and then transfer it over to a blog post. It doesn't quite make sense. So you have to understand like the medium and the audience for the given format. Anyway, so, I've been in this period of planning, so it took a little while for me to plan things properly, and then I'm in an execution phase right now. So once you know what you're working on, it's a lot easier to execute on the specifics. For example, this past Monday, I knew that I wanted to write a blog post, so I woke up, had coffee, walked Georgie, sat down for about three hours, and wrote about 1500 words or so more than even what I intended and I was just hoping to get like one hour to an hour and a half of good writing but things were flowing well so I stuck with it and just kept writing until I finished saying everything I wanted to say now it's gonna be rough I'm gonna have to you know edit it a couple times probably put some images run through it again but the point is I, I got a lot done that specific day because I knew what I was gonna work on now there have been other days actually probably the six weeks before that before the planning phase where I would sit down at my desk sort of check my email had a loose idea of a couple things that I needed to do before the end of the week but it wasn't really 
there was no pressure to finish it by a certain time. So I finished what I needed to, but I didn't really work ahead. And what I'm realizing, which is super obvious now that I'm on the other side of it, is I could plan ahead uh, a lot farther and get a lot more work done in a shorter time just from planning ahead. And yes, I could sit down and each day is like a new and little adventure where I'm trying to figure out what to work on, but that's no way to run a business. It's no way to grow a business as you're um, you know, trying to maximize your like output in, in a smaller amount of time, which I mean, no one wants to waste time. So I'd, like I said, I'd rather be outside walking around like I am today. Those are a couple of the components. Each day is a little bit different. Um, I wrote a blog post that day. In this sort of preparation for uh, like the next quarter, I do know I'm gonna be batching more content. So in one day, I may record two to three podcast interviews. I did that earlier this week. So I got, I got three done in one day and it was great. There are some solo podcasts that I'm gonna be doing as well. And same deal, I'll probably be able to do two, three, four of them in one day, depending on how long they are. You don't want to, my voice gives out basically. At some point my voice gets a little scratchy and I get a little tired, but batching the work is super helpful. Same thing with YouTube videos and even more so with YouTube because there's some setup involved. I typically do a talking head situation. I'm trying to get out in the field a little bit more, but inside in the, you know, in the studio, which is the apartment, I potentially have to set up some lights. I potentially have to set some things up and it's super helpful if I can set it up one time, shoot five to eight videos, for example, and then tear it all down. Instead of setting it up each time I need to shoot one or two videos, it's just not very efficient. And if I could batch it together, it makes a whole lot of sense, much faster. Um, I'm in the frame of mind to create videos, to talk versus maybe brainstorming or writing the outlines, which is another activity, right? I could batch the outlines. So a lot of times what I may do is um, I'll have a list of ideas that I'm, I know I'm going to create a video or a podcast on it. I'll make my outline, you know, maybe uh, sometimes they're detailed, sometimes they aren't, depends on the topic. And then I can you know, knock out 10 outlines in an hour and a half, right? So if I'm in that frame of mind where I'm like just getting some ideas out, it doesn't have to be exactly right, it just needs to be like close enough. And with those outlines, that's good enough for me to move forward to like the actual production of the videos. And, and further, right, so each step of the process, I can batch that work. So same deal um, as far as like uploading and editing the videos. So currently I'm trying not to edit much video anyway. So I'll upload it, get it over to my editor, and then when she finishes up, then I can hop into, on the YouTube side, put in the description, any kind of admin work that I need to do over there, all in one swoop, right? Again, I'm in a frame of mind of creating uh, thumbnails, descriptions, scheduling the videos, all that stuff. So batching that kind of work, super effective. And as I'm going through and mentioning this stuff, it's just the, the variety of things that I end up working. So another thing that I end up personally struggling with right now is uh, email. So part of it is working with students and that's actually pretty streamlined. I am starting to batch the responses that I provide to the students. Uh, I do have a VA, an assistant who helps me with a customer service. Actually, it's a director of customer service. So she's actually doing a ton on that side and just admin on my course, super helpful. Basically email does bog me down a little bit, especially here's the problem, right? So I have multiple mediums out there where I have, it's a platform, right? So I have a podcast, I have a blog, I have YouTube, um, I, I guest post in various places. And what happens is people just shoot me random emails who are not students, right? So they're just asking questions, which is cool. It gives me ideas for content and stuff like that. A lot of times there are good questions out there, all right? A lot of times there are fine questions out there in the world. Other times there are bad questions. There are questions that a person can look up on their own. 
simply Google it and get an answer, right? Super easy to do that stuff and sometimes, and these are the, the emails that are bogging me down, it's emails where there's no real value, it appears to be a lazy person on the other side of the keyboard, and uh, frankly, I'll just be honest with you, I don't wanna interact with lazy people. <laughs> so if it's a lazy person who can't even Google something on their own, I don't really wanna work with them. So that's just blunt, that's the way it is. And there's plenty of other people that want to work with lazy folks. I am not one of them. So getting off the soapbox, we could bring it back down. So email does take up a decent amount of time, but many, many of the issues I have with email is just, it's my own, um, my own fault for not batching emails um, in, in the right way, not triaging them in the right way. And I'm very close to hiring an executive assistant to help me out with email management and a few other admin type items, right? So it could be some higher level stuff, but I actually need an executive assistant here. So previously I had a VA helping me out with some random stuff, but she wasn't specifically skilled in the areas where I need help. Again, this email triage, dealing with vague requests without much direction from me. Um, she was skilled in other areas, but I need someone who's like an executive assistant who I can like get them to do like just random stuff without much direction. So that's sort of how my day runs. Depending on what's going on, you know, I may be working about four to six hours. It's like kind of the sweet spot for me, but in the last, I would say, month or so, I just had some big stuff going on. So I like relaunched my Five Figure Niche Site course. I put in like all new testimonials. I revamped the whole entire sales page. I, I took um, the existing sales page, which was built with a like a page builder, like drag and drop situation, and I moved it over to uh, a theme that is straightforward. It's vanilla. It's uh, powerful, it loads fast, I love it. It's called Thesis, and the skin that lays on top of it is called Focus. And it does exactly what I needed to do without too many, you know, just bullshit bells and whistles that I don't need, I'm not interested in. It's super fast for me to make updates on the page, and it loads faster. It is about one quarter of the size of the previous page. All the same content, it's just there's there's much less waste there. So anyway, I, I've been busy because I, I've been like heads down just executing, doing stuff that requires, you know, a big chunk of time to put it together. And it's really hard for me to like, um, like for example, today I revamped a email sequence, right? It's about six emails in this email sequence and I updated all the testimonials in there, a lot of the copy and it's not something that I was gonna be able to jump in and just do the you know, 15 minutes at a time. I needed two and a half hours of uninterrupted time and focus knowing what I was gonna work on to get it done. And I actually finished it a little bit faster than I expected. And part of it was because of like the, the super focus. And I've been actually experimenting with some nootropics um, from a company called Find My Formula and they're excellent. I'm going to be sharing some more information about them in the future, but really enjoy uh, that product. And I don't use it every single day. I don't uh, use it, you know, excessively, but there's several different formulas that they have. And I've found a few of them that just work great for me and I enjoy taking them. So I'm going to be experimenting with those uh, nootropics and that sort of thing. So that's sort of like how my day runs. I am interested. How do you plan your day? Especially, I know a lot of people out there, maybe you specifically, you have um, a full-time job, you have a family, you got a commute you have to deal with. How do you structure your day when you're working on side projects? How do you get as much done as you can in the limited time that you have available? I've been there, right? So I did that in the past. And one of the, it's not really a trick, it's a brute force. I don't know that it worked perfectly, but what I would do is just wake up super early in the morning. I'd wake up at uh, 4 a.m. 
work for a couple hours and then work my day job. I was burning the candle at both ends and uh, I was a little tired from time to time, but I mean, I got my work done. I got my side gig project work done before 7 a.m. So I got my best work done on my project, which was, you know, I mean, that's what you should do, I think. All right, so leave me a comment. And if you wanna know like more tips or more details, just ask below. I'm always looking for ideas for videos. And also let me know um, if the wind was too loud. Do we like the setting? It's kind of cool with the old pagoda in the background there. Um, Georgie's sitting in the shade. My legs are getting sunburned. And um, yeah, we'll call it a day. Let me know what you think.